prayer to Saint Michael the Archangel. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Let my prayer come into your presence. Incline the, your ear to my cry for help, O Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. We pray for all parishioners, relatives, and friends for medical professionals and volunteers, for um, all the sick, especially those who have uh, contracted COVID-19, for our beloved dead, and uh, we pray for guidance and direction as we prepare to reopen. To prepare ourselves let us again acknowledge our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity so that unhindered in mind and body alike we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. After a while, the wadi where Elijah was hiding dried up because there was no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Go now to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and live there. For I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he set out and went to Zarephath. When he came to the gate of the town, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel so that I may drink. As she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. But she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of meal in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I am now gathering a couple of sticks so that I may go home and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. 
Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you have said. But first make me a little cake of it and bring it to me. And afterwards make something for yourself and your son. For this says the Lord, the God of Israel, The jar of meal will not be emptied and the jug of oil will not fail until the day that the Lord sends rain on the earth. She went and did as Elijah said, so that she as well as he and her household ate for many days. The jar of meal was not emptied, neither did the jug of oil fail according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let our response be, Lord, let your face shine on us. Lord, let your face shine on us. Answer me when I call, O God, of my right. You gave me room where, when I was in distress, be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, you people, shall my honor suffer shame? How long will your love vain words, and seek after lies. Lord, let your face shine on us. But know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. When you are disturbed, do not sin. Ponder it on your beds and be silent. Lord, let your face shine on us. There are many who say, Oh, that we might see some good. Let the light of your face shine on us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when their grain and wine abound. Lord, let your face shine on us. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled under food. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. How many times we have been so worried and God has come to our need. How many times we have been shown by God himself that he can never be outdone in his generosity. We have uh, this first reading from the book of Kings about the prophet Elijah. Yesterday, we saw how God provided him with water and food to eat at a time of famine. And now, we hear about the same prophet uh, who was helped by a widow who herself was in great need. And uh, out of the generosity of that poor widow, they were able not only to survive throughout the drought, but also we are told that the um, jar of grain never emptied out. There was always provision for them in their great need. We worry sometimes too much, and uh, um, 
and that is also true for myself. Um, you know, running a, a parish of this size and meeting our obligations, and and uh, there are times when um, we have also our own share of sleepless nights, just thinking about all the problems uh, that uh, we are faced with. How do we pay, for example, our mortgage and all that? But somehow God provides. Somehow, out of the blue, uh, somebody comes up and offers you not much, but, uh, you know, still a blessing. Like that poor widow spoken about the other day who... Um, gave not from her abundance, but rather even from her own poverty, uh, she still managed to offer something uh, to help the temple. And, uh, and so we are encouraged to keep our eyes fixed on the Lord, uh, who is uh, always our greatest provider, and uh, we should never lose sight of this. In our poverty, in our great need, we always have to entrust ourselves uh, to His loving care and mercy. If God has met the needs of those of our ancient forebears, like Elijah and the widow of Zarephath, surely this same God can also meet our need in our time of great distress. Let us ask God to open for us the fountain of life and blessing. For the church and her holy leaders, that our good deeds may shine so brightly that we may give light to all in the house, glorify, glorifying, in our hev glorifying our Heavenly Father. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the men and women of rank in our own day, that they may not be dull of heart, but reflect on God's ways in the silence of their souls, and put God's commands into practice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That like the widow of Zarephath, we may believe the word of God, so that our jar of flour will not go empty, nor our jug of oil run dry, when we reach out to help those God sends to us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are desperate, who are at the end of their resources, who are unemployed, depleted through illness, or close to death, that God may send them a prophet of hope and comfort. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our dear ones who have died, that as they once seasoned this life with the salt of their witness to Christ, he may now receive them into the eternal city which shines on the mountain of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In the silence of our hearts, let us include our personal intention. The Lord is good, the Lord is merciful. Blessed be the name of the Lord, now and forever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
by the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take these, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take these, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do these in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Jose and Petra, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Bekit and Magdalene, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. May this mingling of the blood and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should en enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me. Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your Spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered through Christ our Lord. Amen. God, our Father, we come to you in our need to ask your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Protect the medical experts that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health soon and protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in this trying time to work for the good of all and to help those in need. We implore you to stop the spread of this virus and to save us from our fears. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who plead for your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly unto you, O Virgin of virgins, our Mother. To you do we come, and before you we stand sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petition, but in your mercy hear and answer us. Amen. Our Lady of the Sick, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. St. Michael the Archangel, pray for us. St. Gabriel, pray for us. St. Raphael, pray for us. St. Josephine Bakita, pray for us. St. Magdalene of Canossa, pray for us. St. Anthony of Padua, pray for us. St. Therese of the Child Jesus, pray for us. St. Padre Pio, pray for us. St. Pius X, pray for us. All you holy angels and archangels, pray for us. All you saints and martyrs of God, pray for us. I'd like to inform everyone that once we open our churches, I would like to resume with the normal uh, schedule of Masses. It will be Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 7 o'clock, and Tuesday and Thursday at 7.30 in the morning, and on Saturday at 9 o'clock uh, in the morning. We will give you the schedule for the weekend uh, once we really know exactly how uh, this uh, reopening is going to uh, be done. But uh, as far as the weekday Masses are concerned, uh, we will resume our regular schedule once the church is allowed to open. Uh, I know that you are all excited to uh, come back after the announcement of the uh, Ontario Premier, but uh, we need to ensure that the church is safe for everybody and, uh, and we need instru further instruction from the Archdiocese. So until then, we are still going to celebrate Mass at 730 but once the church is uh, allowed to open, then we will resume the uh, schedule that uh, we have in place uh, for uh, the weekdays. And then you just stand by. Uh, we will inform you how the weekend masses are going to take uh, place. The Lord be with you and with your spirit, and may the blessing of Almighty God descend upon you and remain with you always, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.